Hello, welcome to this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Uh, today we're going to be dealing with an infinite sequence, which is covered in our Calculus 2 um, textbook, uh, which is Worldwide Integral Calculus. Um, so a few things that are kind of given to you in the problem is that for any a less than b, which are positive, um, and greater than zero, that implies that a is less than the square root of a, b, is less than a plus b over 2 is less than b, which is a special case of the uh, arithmetic geometric mean inequality, which we solved last week, um, where a and b are ordered. So we are also given that x1 equals a, x2 equals b, and x sub 2n plus 1 is equal to the square root which is basically, okay, I'll just, um, the square root of um, x sub 2n times x sub 2n minus 1, and then x sub 2n plus 2 is equal to the square, uh, is equal to 1 half of the sum of those two uh, terms. Uh, so what I've done here is to kind of make this general statement a little bit clearer in your mind. We have two um, terms, x1 and x2, followed by x3 and x4. And you notice that x3 and x4 are um, the uh, geometric and arithmetic mean of x1 and x2. Um, so we know um, so what I've done here is kind of rewritten what's in that corner a little bit neater. So we have an interval from A to B, which is uh, non-empty because A is strictly less than B. And we have inside of that interval um, the arithmetic and uh, the geometric and arithmetic mean of a and B, which is also non-empty because the geometric is strictly less than um, A plus B since last week we saw the only time the, uh, those, two, um, those two values are equal is when A equals B. Um, so yeah, uh, we know we have a smaller distance to go between X3 and X4 than we did between X1 and X2. And similarly, we have x5 and x6 are, is a smaller distance than x3 and x4. But the fact that it's decreasing, the distance between um, x sub 2n plus 1 and x sub 2n plus 2 is decreasing, doesn't tell us that this sequence converges. We have to say, we have to prove that, because um, it could be decreasing but never really reach uh, an interval where you just have one point, and that would be the convergence of the sequence. Uh, we want to prove that the distance between x sub 2n plus 1 and x sub 2n plus 2 goes to 0 uh, as n goes to infinity. Um, so if you recall, what x sub 2n plus 2 is, so we have a, a couplet. We have a, an even and an odd. Uh, we have an even and an odd couplet, which you can see here, like between 2 and 1. So we have this even and this odd, and the even terms, x sub 2n plus 2, um, well, well, I guess this is given to you, but um, it will help to kind of think about this in a more concrete way uh, when we go down the line and make our big statement. So we have this even and odd couplet is equal to the um, arith, um, sorry, the yeah, the arithmetic mean of the two numbers before that couplet 
minus the geometric mean of the two numbers before that couplet. So I'm just going to simplify this down a little bit. So what we have here, um, after multiplying this by 2 and uh, subtracting the two fractions, so we, we basically have found a common base for this geometric mean, so we can subtract the two. And this is exactly equal to um, the square root of x sub 2n minus the square root of x sub 2n minus 1. You can do this, uh, you can FOIL this, or just realize that we have um, the x sub 2n squared, which is x sub 2n. And what, what kind of tips this off is like the coefficients, right, being the uh, binomial expansion, um, being like the first triangle in that pyramid that we all learned in pre-calculus or whatever, uh, being 1, 1, negative 2, and the negative means it's minus. But um, we want to simplify this down a bit, uh, a bit more. Uh, and we can't do it because this is a really simple, simplified, so we're going to use an inequality. And we want this, we want to show that something goes to zero. And so um, we want to find something that's greater than what we have here that also goes to zero because that will mean it will get, it, it will get smushed in by the sandwich principle. So what I've done here is since this, since this term is, um, we'll call this alpha plus beta, this term is alpha minus beta, um, this is going to be greater than because all of our terms we're dealing with here are positive, so it's okay to make that generalization. And this we can simplify nicely because since we have a negative term uh, multiplied to a, like a a subtraction term multiplied to an addition term, the cross terms are going to cancel. So once the cross terms cancel, we get x sub 2n minus x sub 2n minus 1 over 2. And what this tells us is that we have uh, this like odd, even odd couplet. So take, so for um, we'll take n equals 1 to be uh, an example. Uh, when n equals 1, we have x sub 4 minus x sub 3. Uh, and then since we have this less than sign in the middle of all this, we know that x sub 4 minus x sub 3 is less than x sub 2 minus x sub 1 over 2. Um, so we're saying that whatever, however far down we go uh, in our sequence, Whatever uh, couplet we choose, the one before that uh, divided by 2 will be greater than that couplet that we chose. Um, this, still doesn't this still just shows us the decreasing nature of these couplets, of the distance between numbers in these, of the distance between terms in these couplets, sorry. Uh, it doesn't show us that it goes to 0. However, if we take... Um, b minus a to be our base case, uh, we know that uh, four from, from x sub 4 to x sub 3, uh, that's going to be b minus a over 2. And then x sub 5, x sub 6 to x sub 5, it's going to be that value divided by 2, which means we're um, getting smaller by a factor of 2 each time. So that, that dividing by 2 each time is going to give us this 2 to the n here. Um, sorry, it's going to be less than or equal to, but the only time it's equal to is when n equals 1 because of the case I just described. And that's not going to affect what happens uh, as n approaches infinity. Um, but the, it would just be equal if we had... Actually, never mind. Um, it wouldn't just, it, yeah, it would just be equal when n equals 1.
um, but that's not going to affect our, our, large, our large terms. And then we have b minus a is kind of the base that we're dividing by 2 each time. And b minus a is also the greatest uh, because, uh, because of this, um, this inequality that we're given. b minus a is like by default the largest interval that we're going to be doing. So we're going to take b minus a over 2 to the n. And just by looking at this as n approaches infinity, this uh, the length is going to go to zero. And since the length is going to zero, but these two terms never equal each other, um, it's kind of like a par uh, it's kind of like a paradox in a way that the length is going to zero, but the interval will contain a single point as n approaches infinity. And that is the proof that the sequence that we're given converges. Anyways, thank you very much for watching this week's Advanced Knowledge Problem of the Week. Um, as I mentioned before, you can find, as I mentioned before, you can find uh, th uh, this kind of subject matter in our calculus series textbook. Um, visit our website to find that. Um, visit our, um, our playlist for more problems of the week including last week's advanced knowledge where we proved the arithmetic geometric mean inequality. And you can subscribe to our YouTube channel in these links here. Um, or if you're on mobile, the links will all be in a card up below. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.